Hello. I'm aware it's been two months. <laughs> to those of you who are miraculously still here, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, as you can see, this is not a lab vlog of any sort, nor is this my coming back to YouTube type of video. Um, first of all, I did not leave. Uh, long story short, I accidentally included footage that showed lab data in one of my last videos. The video found its way to a lab mate and I got in trouble for filming anything in lab at all. Although I tried my best to not include anyone as I didn't sign up for that. And after that, um, I just didn't have enough emotional bandwidth to try to sustain a positive outlook on video when everything is literally going to shit. No one wants to see you all negative and I do not want to see myself all negative. So needless to say, the break from trying to come up with new video ideas and uploading videos, um, you know, it needed a break. And I would not be filming anything in lab anymore either. And it's easy to feel unfair because many of my YouTube friends can openly document their lab lives. But it is what happened in my situation and it was indeed a lapse of judgment on my part. But anyway, this is in the past now and we will not talk about it from this point on. It is kind of funny <laughs> because I started making videos to immortalize this chapter of my life. But the very things that take up 90% of my time in PhD is the things I can no longer capture. So at this point, I guess I do whatever the fuck I would like to do in terms of, you know, this little corner of the internet. <laughs> I like just writing and expressing myself in ways I feel maybe too awkward to do in videos. So I thought of this as uh, I guess an alternative form of me documenting my life at this moment and giving me an outlet that is not just experiments in my life. A podcast, if you will, an essay without a thesis, if you will. I'll just be talking. Speaking of, uh, my absence thus far is not entirely attributed to the lab footage incident. I don't exactly shy away from the fact that this is a difficult time in my life. I would probably describe my life in the past six months as the letter V, as in Victor. Perhaps the most difficult time of my short 24 year life so far. And it is crazy how sucky these few years have been and continue to be for many of us. I am really lucky to have stayed relatively healthy from COVID throughout, but I was plagued by other health issues I would much rather not get into. The letter V started when my grandfather passed away last October, and a lot has happened since then. Um, my mom's mom, my grandmother, was moved into the local ICU. The last time I talked to her was right before she suddenly deteriorated from lung cancer progression and had to get her trachea cut open so she could breathe. The last words she uttered before completely losing her voice, likely forever, um, were, when are you coming home? And that broke me. Um, nothing else mattered to me. And that brokenness acutely manifested in all aspects of my life. I am just absolutely consumed by the guilt of not being there for my family and being absent from my roots. Uh, the weeks following my grandmother's admissions to the hospital was my lowest of low. I was not communicating with anyone. I was trying my best to function, but definitely failing. Um, I was staying up till 4 a.m. just so I could talk to grandma because it was my mom's visitation hours. Um, trying to tell her that I would be home soon, <laughs> although I have no idea when I'll be home next. And I have been, I have begun preparing myself to just never see her in person ever again. And around the same time, 
um, there was downward pressure from my mentor and my collaborator that was, um, I was coming in at irregular hours, which is totally my fault, by the way. <laughs> Honestly, they probably hate me now. They likely thought I was just not caring about my lab work anymore. And as a result, I'm sure they, you know. I used to consider them my family away from home, but since my life went to shambles, the typical warm and friendly is just not the case anymore. Everything I do now, interestingly, is met with a strong lace of coldness and indifference, as they should and as it should, ironically. It's a workplace, not a brunch with friends. I honestly blame myself for uh, tipping my scale towards things that are not work. And I blame myself for being so naive to believe that coworkers and friends can be in one, like 100% of the time. In truth, though, at that point, I have been so disillusioned, I couldn't give more shits when one of the people I love the most is dying and wanted to see me. And I said this again and again before, I was crumbling from all fronts. And just when I thought I can get things to be better from some point on, something has to happen and pushes me back down. The stress in recent months has been overwhelming and I'm mad at myself for it. It's burning down all of my self-worth. There's um, no forgiveness to be found, only a desire to vindicate. Um, I hate carrying this weight around, but can find literally nowhere to offload. I remember this analogy from um, the movie The Firm. So I'm basically like a ship leaving its port carrying cargo and never reaching a destination. And I think that is very, very fitting. Before you think that, yes, I'm done with the negativity too. As victim-y as I sounded, I am more so describing it as if I'm out of myself. Um, it's strangely cathartic and therapeutic to just sit here and psychoanalyze myself. But yeah, I feel unsure because everything in my life right now is uncertain. I don't know if this western blot is gonna give me good bands. I don't know if my samples will give me clear signals on the cytometers. I don't know if and when I'm gonna be competent enough to ever get that fucking PhD. I don't know when I'm gonna see my family next in person. I don't know when I'm gonna hug them again in person. I crave certainty, but that as I've come to learn, it's just not the way of life. So I tell myself that there is uncertainty because I'm in the process of evolving. <laughs> Except as much as I say that I am moving towards the better, I was evolving for the worse. And during those intensely stressful days and weeks, I was angry at my situation. I was angry at the unfairness, I was just closed off. Um, now that I look back, it's more so like I've gone far, right? But I was not recognizing how far I still have to go. You know, I've overcome so much, why is this fucking thing still fucking happening to me? Then, quite funny actually, I found an unlikely ally in my dad. He had always been a critical figure in my life, both in the important sense and the inclined to criticize severely sense. When I went to my parents, who were already under a tremendous amount of stress because of what's been going down, I was expecting my father to dismiss me and my mother to just try her best to keep it together. Instead, I was met with softness and immense understanding from my dad. Um, he told me stories of a similar stage in his life, a time of great loss when he was stabbed in the back by his friend and almost everything um, 
he has built in his career was taken away just a few years ago. And he found solace in building himself from the ground up with blood, sweat, and tears. So the people around him who are struggling can fight away, not worry about him. And he was talking about me. The best thing you can do when you're so removed from the situation is to make sure that you're not a source of worry for the people in the center trying to do the best they can. Which, as I was jotting down some talking points before and now saying this, like my tears are just streaming down my face. I have, I have never had access to that side of my dad and that side of him just makes me just so sad because I harbored so many hard feelings towards him all these years when in fact he was literally just the same as me um, except I am sulking in a great sadness while he was trying his best so the people he loves around him can fight on um, speaking of my dad though <laughs> I also saw an unusually strong side of my mom. You know, if you know my mom, she was always the flappy one in the family. She would be literally flustered by an incremental increase in prices of lettuce. Um, but in the thick of this, she has been the calmest I've ever seen. Like, bear in mind, her mother is on assisted breathing machine. Um, I would say she's still the constantly rambling self that I know, but there is this air of strength. She rose to the occasion in ways no one thought she could, or at least I didn't think she could. And that alone had been a big part of the stabilizing force in my life since, because I was reinforced again and again just through my firsthand observation of my parents that everybody is doing the best they can and I owe it to them to do the best I can too. So here comes the upward stroke of the letter V. <laughs> I uh, took some time off to sort my affairs out, um, talk to my parents to find a schedule that allows me to stay connected to everyone back home without simultaneously wrecking my career and just relying on my partner who graciously visited me in the middle of this. Um, the same co-worker, pretty much the only co-worker who I straight up broke down in confusion and sadness in front of for the first time when she confronted me about my slacking at work and my lack of motivation to stay in graduate school in the middle of everything. She offered me possibly the best way of looking at my PhD, which I'm gonna share, which I'm gonna share with you here. So she said, the most difficult part of the adulthood is figuring out how to balance work requirements and personal needs. And the PhD right now is likely the best training wheel you got before the harsh reality of, you know, the real world businesses hits. I for one, acknowledged that I was long shielded from the harshness of this world, which was likely why I responded so poorly to these past few months. So this perspective was new to me, and I deeply, deeply appreciated her for pointing that out for me. The most significant step I took, and this is not advice whatsoever, by the way, was that I distanced myself from everyone at work. Everyone now is more or less at arm's length. So I've decided to talk less and listen more. So do what I'm here to do and not get comfortable, which is a risk you run when you're developing relationships with your coworkers. So this, <laughs> I've talked about this extensively with my therapist, is the only way I could identify right now that I know for a fact will allow an emotional quite mentally jaded and frankly weak person like me to compartmentalize so my chaotic personal life can stop bleeding into my professional life. Like I said, 
This is quite a twisted way of looking at things. I am very aware of that, and I may very well change my mind in the future. I will lose out on valuable friendship with people in the lab, that's for sure. But with myself now being hypersensitive to trauma in any circumstances, the lines dividing coworkers and friends um, have become kind of too dangerous to cross. I will always maintain my distance at all costs, and I will continue to do so until the day I finally walk out for the last time with two middle fingers in the air. I'm just kidding. I will never do that. I will never do that. God. Um, I must say, despite everything, all my fuck-ups, um, my experience in graduate school has been almost always pleasant and positive. This is something I only realized recently and was just glossed over in my various conversations with others, but I was running away a lot, like a lot from pain. Any sort of pain, physical or mental. I wanted a pain-free life where everything is Gucci, <laughs> only to find myself buckling up to try and strike out so the pain won't bother me anymore. So this could manifest in random outbursts of almost vengeful productivity or random episodes of great depression as if I was purging the pain from my body, you know, stuff like that. But as soon as this one kind of pain is gone, another one pops up. And the faster I purge that, the faster a new wave comes in. So the whole of pain is almost always filled to the brim. You know, I, I used to look forward to finding happiness, but I have come to realize that that does not exactly exist. I think it was Mark Manson, maybe, um, who had famous quotes about this. So it goes something along the line of, um, I think we need to stop running towards ultimate joy and being upset at how far away that is. And instead, we should embrace the pain that is inevitably, um, oh my god, I can't English, inevitably part of us. So we need to choose to suffer for the right reasons, be it for growth or hope or whatever, but we need to make it count. So in my situation, how I am applying it now, now that I'm out of the woods, because I won't consider myself out of this first patch of proverbial woods until probably when I can officially call myself a doctor. But, you know, how I'm framing it for my sanity now is that I'm lowering myself from the expectations I set for myself earlier on in life, and I am embracing the pain or just the realization that I am probably not meant to be extraordinary. Extraordinary people are just that rare. It doesn't mean I'm giving up on myself and my potential. It just means that I am letting go of my illusions of being one in a million, which has really similar odd as finding ultimate joy and actually committing my whole self to live as humbly, normally, and freely as I possibly can. So the important thing here, finding the exceptional in the ordinary, that is the extraordinary I strive for. But anyway, I think I'll stop here. I'm sure uh, the next entry, whenever that is, will be a lot more positive than this. But until next time, I hope you, whoever listens or watch me type for like 20 minutes, take care of yourself. Have a great day, evening, night, weekend, and stay hopeful.